If you're feeling like life has been a bit expensive lately, you're not alone. On today's episode of Talking Sense, we're gonna be reacting to a video that's been going around on TikTok or what is it? No, it's not TikTok, it's on X, X. which used to be something else, but anyway. Um, it's been giving people the heebie-jeebies when it comes to inflation and the real impact to rising prices and your budget. So we're gonna break down some things you need to know and also give you some pro tips on how to handle inflation and combat it in your life. Before we get started with the video though, I do wanna introduce my guest today. It's Brandon Barber. He's one of our financial advisors here in the West Little Rock office. And he's gonna be joining me. My understanding is um, that you may have sneak peeked this video. Am I right? I definitely took a little sneak peek. I okay. didn't know I was not supposed to. So. Well, I was asked to do a blind react, so I haven't seen this. Um, so this is gonna be my first time. Um, so we're gonna roll this tape real quick and then we're gonna talk about it. I feel like I'm gonna be sick. I just like looked through my Walmart history and I found this like um, Walmart order from two years ago for the whole month worth of groceries. 45 items cost $126. A whole month of groceries just for me, basically. But I did notice this reorder all button, and I wanted to see how much it would cost now. Now, this order of 45 items for one month would have cost $414. That is four times more. How the f***? How? Like, what? All right, it's not funny. I have to say, though, that guy's voice, like, he could he could be, like, shaggy he on could be. Scooby-Doo. Um, but if you get past all the likes and you get past the that kind of stuff, uh, I mean, almost four times as much for the same exact items in just four years. That's pretty substantial. Yeah. It, I mean, on 45 items, that's a big difference. You I know. will say, though, I don't know that I've ever walked out with more than, like, 10 items and spent less than $100 with my household, so... You know, I can't even imagine a hundred dollars being enough for a whole month's worth of stuff. But I mean, I'm feeling it. I, I in my grocery list, like for me to even go to Kroger, I'm spending a hundred bucks, even if it's just for a couple of days worth of stuff. So I'm feeling that in my budget. Have you felt it in yours? Yeah, me and my wife have definitely felt that. And something that we notice helps is actually doing the orders like this guy was talking about, mm -hmm. because you get to see the price before you get to the checkout. We've and done you that. don't impulse buy. Yeah, you don't impulse buy, but there's a lot of things that you get to see the price. And you're like, oh, maybe not. <laughs> yeah. And I like that, you know, when you talk about mobile ordering, I do like the fact that I could see what's on sale and maybe use that without having to walk through the whole store to find those little tags and things. Um, but I, I think all of us can relate to the fact that inflation is having a true impact on our budgeting and it's something we got to deal with. So we need to talk about how to deal with it efficiently or what we can do to protect ourselves um, and make sure that we stay on that path to financial independence. So first thing I feel like we've got to deal with is understanding what inflation is at its core. What is it? Yeah, inflation is the rate at which goods and services um, increase year over year. Mm -hmm. um, and that just basically means that your money is losing value over time. That's a that's a brutal way to put it, but it's the truth. It's, you know, things are going to cost more, so your purchasing power drops if you're not increasing your income, of course. Um, and it affects the prices of everything around us. What a lot of people don't realize is that it doesn't affect everything equally. I think when we see that CPI number that comes out each year, often we think, oh, that's just like everything. Everything has gone up by 3% or 5% or 7 You know, it's been pretty rough lately. But... It's, it's not actually that act, like that linear, let me say. One commonly used inflation metric is that CPI, and it's calculated by the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics, which I find interesting. The Labor Statistics Department measures it. I've always wondered why. I, don't <laughs> I had know. to look that one up. But they do that by checking the average change in prices paid for a variety of goods and services classified by eight groups. Food, housing, apparel, medical care, recreation, transportation, education, education and communication, excuse me, and other goods and services. But it's not as indicative of the, like we talked about, specifics that each of us sees in our day-to-day -day lives. I agree. 
And one thing to note about the CPI is they change the calculation from time to time. Mm -hmm. Back in the early 80s, they changed the housing that you see there. It used to be based on the value of your home, like your mortgage payment and maintenance. And now it's based on basically what you would pay for rent if you like lived the fair in that market house. value for rent. Correct. And mm -hmm. so that takes away some of um, the sharp changes we see in the housing market, whether it goes up or down. And so that does tamp down what we see in the inflation a little bit. Um, and that's been some people's complaint. You know, they change things that make it look like it's a little bit lesser number and maybe they're doing that. So their cost that of living so adjustment on social security isn't as great. Who knows why they're doing it? Right. But, but I think cooling inflation, you know, we because we're hearing about that now. So it's been, everybody's talked about inflation being so heinous, so heinous. And then all of a sudden they're, they're going, yay, inflation is stemmed, right? We're, we're at a more manageable number. The thing to understand about that, though, is it doesn't mean things have become more cost effective necessarily. You know, we've got a graphic that we're going to share here that just shows it, it looks kind of like a busy graphic, even for me. So I'm going to own that on the front end. But when you look at it, what I want you to catch is that although the price or the, the rate of inflation has come down some as far as how quickly we're inflating, that doesn't necessarily mean that the price of goods has come down prices coming down would be what's called deflation and we have not experienced that it's actually not good for the economy if we have deflation that means people are losing jobs things are closing down we don't want that but it's important to understand that things are still getting more expensive they're just not doing it so quickly yeah. i think if you were paying attention during covid the cost of just basic things just shot up out of nowhere and they've they've cooled but it's still not as cheap as it was pre-covid yeah, you still go in the grocery store and you're like, I don't remember paying for that that much that last week. And yeah. it's I like, mean, seven dollars oh, wow. for a box of cereal. <laughs> if I don't catch it on sale, Cheerios cost seven dollars for the large box, which my family goes through one or two of those a week. So, you know, understand that you still need to plan for it because it's still there. Even if it feels like it's more manageable, the, the sheer cost of things has still made its way up. Um, so we rarely experience deflation. We really don't want to, but let's talk about, you know, we talked about before that inflation is not linear as far as like, if they say 3%, it's not 3% on everything. It varies by different items. Um, so we've got another graphic here talking about how prices have changed in specific areas that might impact your life. And let's discuss some of these though, real quick. And one that I feel like isn't on here, but should be um, especially for the state of Arkansas, is it talks about motor vehicle insurance. What it doesn't talk about is homeowners policies. After we had a couple of major storms come through, we had a tornado come through central Arkansas, I have had friends tell me that their homeowners policy has just shot up. But these are some of the others, so let's talk about those. Yeah, I, I think the one that catches my eye out of all of them, lots of them are linear or pretty close to it going up. But you see used cars and trucks, they peaked back during COVID. You know, mm -hmm. you could get more than you paid for your car for a lot of us. And it was tempting to sell. But at the mm -hmm. same point or same thing, you're going to have to go out and buy another one. But I like how you can see it has gone down. But all these Even others like that, Teresa. still up 29%. Yeah. And like you mentioned earlier, you're, we're not seeing deflation in just about any of the other categories. And mm -hmm. so it's interesting to see it in a graph. Yes. And I think one of the ones that I was actually encouraged by is that medical care, it shows has only gone up 10 percent, whereas motor vehicle insurance has gone up 46. Used cars are at 29. Food away from home, eating out has gone up 25. The one that's not just heinous to me is the medical care, which is encouraging to me. But the reality is, again, if you're not doing something to increase your buying power over time, then you are setting yourself up to have less buying power in the future. So want to make sure you understand that. But let's talk about what you can do, what you can do to combat inflation. So, uh, you know, we know those prices are going to go up. We know we've got to do something about our buying power. One of the things that you can do is investing. And I know people are kind of going, well, of course, you're going to talk about investing, right? That's what we do. But as we were talking about earlier, there's only a couple of things that have kept pace with inflation long term. Now, before we get into that, got to talk about disclosures because we are licensed. Past performance is not indicative of future success. There's no guarantee and there's always a risk of loss when you're doing investments. So we're going to throw that out there to be, be completely transparent. But being able to keep up with inflation and sustain your purchasing power, compound interest is your friend. Yeah. We've seen that real estate and equities are the only things that have outpaced inflation in the long mm -hmm. term. And like she said, that's not a guarantee. Um, but that's why when we have somebody come in, 
and maybe they come in for retirement, we don't stick them in all fixed income because we need to keep up with inflation through the years and give them those cost of living adjustments so that they're not on a fixed income through the rest of their retirement, which could be 20 or 30 years. Well, and I know people who are saving for a home or they're saving for a purchase that's long term. Uh, I had a client come in just the other day and they know they're going to need a car at some point, but they don't need one in the next five years. They could stick it in the bank and maybe get a decent rate of return right now because interest rates are still high. But as those rates come down, their return is going to drop. So we talked about when it makes sense to invest versus when it makes sense to use your bank account, talking about that time horizon. So it may be that even for those sorts of goals, you need to consider doing some investments as opposed to just sticking it in the bank, especially if interest rates start to drop. And then we do have an example here of just kind of like the impact of time because we were talking about compact compound interest Time is the factor that matters most. So we've got this story. We picked, you know, obviously fake names here, Sue and Brad, talking about the power of compounding interest with one of them. They started when they were 21, finished when they were 30. The other one starts at 30. So with Sue, she's the first one. She does it from 21 to 30 and then just lets it sit and grow. Whereas Brad starts at 30 and invests until he's 68. And you can see the math here on the screen. But for those of you that don't see the screen, She ends up with almost double the investment he does. And it's purely because she had this lump sum that got to sit for 38 more years. You can start now, whatever now is for you. Now might be 45. I'm almost 45. Now might be 45 for you, okay? But now is the time to start investing. If you're not participating in your employer plan, you need to because at some point you're going to need that income to carry you through retirement. But, you know, time is your friend or your enemy when it comes to investing. So that's a way to kind of fight it. Let's talk about managing inflation though and what our people who are listening can really do to manage the impact of that. Yeah, I think one thing we've seen is a lot of people have become more conscious of their budget and they've Mm -hmm. taken the time to look through their budget and find places to cut out. And like the CPI does, some people replace their name brand items with their off brand items. And I know not all of us are willing to do that, or maybe there's some items we won't give up because um, they taste so different. Yes. Um, but I think it's a good thing to look at and mm-hmm. just see if it's worth the cost savings. Yes. And I think having margin in your budget is more critical than ever. And what I mean by that is, you know how much you make, making sure you've got wiggle room so that if something that you need goes up in price, it's not derailing your budget, rather just kind of compressing it a little bit. So if you give yourself some wiggle room, having your emergency fund, your savings, I think you're really setting yourself up to win. Another one is managing debt. And this is something that actually my husband and I had a conversation about recently. So we needed to get another car because one of our kids is about to turn 16. Another one of them, y'all pray for me. Um, And managing debt is so critical to us for a number of reasons, but we basically decided to go with a car that was older, had more miles on it, so we wouldn't have a car payment because we know insurance is gonna be higher, adding another driver to the family. Um, And we know also with our kids' sports that we're gonna have travel expenses coming once the season starts again. So that is one of the strategies we use to help offset the increasing costs of our lifestyle. Um, And the last one is career sustainability. Why I can't say that word all of a sudden, I don't know. Sustainability. Talk to us about that. Yeah, I think the importance is getting in a career where you can have your income grow and not stay stagnant. Mm -hmm. Um, You want to have somewhere to move up. And that's something important when you're looking for a job to see if there is a ladder for you to continue to move up so that you can hopefully outpace inflation with your income and, you know, not have such a lifestyle shift mm-hmm. every time that you get a um, in, increase in pay that you don't maintain margin. You know, yes. I think it's really easy to have your lifestyle creep up. It's called lifestyle creep. Mm-hmm. You get a raise and you had the same amount of margin as you did before you got the raise. Mm-hmm. Um, but an increase in income is a great time to get more margin in your budget. So when we do see inflation, it's not as big a deal. There you go. All right. It's time for our final thoughts. We call that our two cents. So I'd love to hear yours first, Brandon. I think inflation can be intimidating to those of us. We see it on the news Mm -hmm. and it can be just kind of a buzzword that we see. Um, But I'd like to just tell you that it's not as scary as everybody makes it out to be. Mm -hmm. If you plan for it and you have a plan, then when it comes around, because it will, um, it's not going to be as bad. 
And for my final thoughts, what I'd really like to encourage you is that having a sound financial basis of education is really one of the keys to feeling confident on your financial journey. One way you can do that is by downloading six keys to financial independence for free. You visit getreadyforthefuture.com slash keys, or you can text keys to 501-381-5228 to get a copy. Thank you guys so much for joining us this week on Talking Sense. We look forward to seeing you again next week. Thanks for listening to Talking Sense. And if you like what you hear, make sure and subscribe to the podcast to get all the newest episodes. The Gym Wealth team is available to you 24-7 at info at getreadyforthefuture.com or by calling our offices at 866-653-PLAN. That's 866-653-7526. And while we like to have fun here, we're also financial advisors, and that means disclosures. You should personally consult a financial advisor before making any investment, and no strategy can assure success. Securities offered through LPL Financial, member FINRA SIPC. Investment advice offered through Independent Advisor Alliance. Independent Advisor Alliance and Gemwell Financial Advisors are separate entities from LPL Financial. 